I want everyone to put down your large electronic devices, look up from your cell phones. We have some special emergency uh, announcements up here, and we know from this week that it's very important to pay attention to these. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, there are no cards in front on the front of the on the back of the chairs, so just make do. All right, we're here to talk about Dispatch, which is a serverless framework. Uh, it's something that we started at VMware. Uh, what was it, about a year ago? And uh, what we wanted to do was think about what would an enterprise class FAS look like? And we really thought about it and went, there's a lot of open source FASs out there. And one of the things that we, we focused on was not re-implementing a FAS, but look how we can take existing technologies and wrap that and work around that, extend, uh, embrace and extend open source. So, first off, we're gonna talk about, you know, why functions, why serverless, et cetera, very quickly, go over that. Uh, Berndt is gonna be talking more about uh, what is dispatch, and then go through a demo uh, integrating into open service broker, yep. which is very exciting. So why functions? Um, you know, as, as you look at where we've gone uh, through, through our journey of uh, compute. We've gone from bare metal servers. Uh, VMware helped revolutionize the, the virtualization market. We've seen that occur with uh, public cloud uh, using virtualization as well. And then a couple of years ago, containers hit the market, became the, the latest hot thing. And now functions are starting to appear. We saw AWS uh, Lambda appear on the public clouds. There's functions in public clouds and a lot of open source projects around uh, FAS solutions. So why are we doing this? Because it makes it a little bit easier for developers to not have to think about the infrastructure. As you look through the continuum here, you are spending more time on your business logic than on the infrastructure itself. So it makes a lot of sense to, you know, get more value out of the code that you're writing and the time you're spending on it. Now, do I think that it's gonna be the end all? No. I think that every cloud native architecture is gonna have a combination of VMs, instances, containers, functions, and services, and be able to then build out your applications like that. But it is a very important uh, piece of what we wanna do as uh, cloud native architectures. And why is that? Well, these functions are event driven, so, you know, depending on the number of events that are coming in, which you can't always predict, you want to now be able to react to those. You, the functions are inherently stateless, so you tend to do something very quickly, they're short duration, and then uh, send, ser send the state off to backend stores, give a response back to if it's an HTTP endpoint. I mean, there's a lot of good uses for this. And the very best thing about it is that it's inherently auto-scaled. As the events come in, we all of a sudden will expand the number of functions running and we can handle the, the demand coming in. Now, lower cost is more of a public cloud, uh, uh, I don't know. Property. What's that? Property. Property, <laughs> good. So, uh, you know, if you, when we're looking at it from a VMware point of view, we think about, okay, how can you run stuff on-prem? You don't necessarily get the cost benefits of, you know, no cost at idle, but it's, I think it's still very important to have on-prem and public cloud uh, having the same type of functions being able to run. Some of the use cases uh, run the gamut. A lot of what we've been seeing is not necessarily people implementing applications with functions as a service, but more looking at it in terms of DevOps, IT ops, automation, and I think in terms of the IoT space, looking at edge computing and how to best handle some of these burst loads coming from IoT devices will be very important. I think serverless could handle all, any of these, but you know we're, we're just seeing that as people are starting to embrace it, they're focused on certain at attributes of this. There, if you want to find out more about uh, you know, just what is happening within serverless and the serverless landscape, we had a, uh, a CNCF serverless working group 
where we created both a white paper and a landscape around what is currently happening in uh, uh, serverless land. Uh, we then, after we shipped that as a 1.0, went on to start talking about a thing called cloud events, which uh, today we just uh, re released a 0 0.1 uh, specification. This is where we're looking at the commonality of uh, looking at how event sources can have more commonality, be able to uh, specify what they look like such that we can transit events between services. So very important work going on there. And with that, I'm going to let Berndt take over. All right. So I guess, yeah, it seems to be working. So I'm going to talk about what is dispatch. So what, what have we built? So Mark alluded to earlier that we are not building the actual FAS. We're not building the function executor um, and scheduler. But rather, we're building a stack of services around the FAS that we think you know, makes it more appropriate for enterprise production deployments. And so what are those services? So one of the things that Mark just alluded to was this cloud events thing. So FAS's functions are event driven. And in order for you to you know, drive these functions, you need events. Um, the public cloud has it easy because you know, like AWS has a whole suite of services. They run on a common event bus. The, public cloud, or the private cloud doesn't have that same thing. We don't have a common event bus, and we have a very disparate um, set of services. So, Dispatch includes what we call an event manager with an event driver interface, which allows you to very easily sort of build um, drivers, which are just small processes, which can import events from effectively any service, uh, translate that into a cloud event, and then push that onto the dispatch event bus, which effectively makes it uh, um, a trigger for any event that you want to subscribe to that particular, or any function that you want to subscribe to that event. Um, currently, we have, we have an event driver for vCenter, and we're working on um, event drivers for public cloud, so you can ingest public cloud events. Uh, secondly, um, current open source FAS is effectively a single user, um, one role experience. And we think in the, the enterprise that doesn't make a lot of sense. You need roles for developers and, and you need roles for administrators. And so we added um, IAM, or uh, Identity Access Management, on top of uh, the FAS, all managed by dispatch. Um, also, we alluded to we are not um, we are not building a FAS, so we have a fun, uh, an adapter interface to the underlying FAS. So this allows us to work with either OpenFAS or RIF today. Um, and in the future, um, we will be able to run uh, functions on the, the public cloud as well. And it might not just be an or, it could be an and, so you can schedule functions in the environment that is mo most appropriate for that function or, for instance, burst to the public cloud. Uh, and lastly, uh, functions, 80% of functions in, in Lambda, I heard this stat recently, are triggered from an API gateway, namely the, the um, Amazon API gateway. We want that, and so I think that's sort of a common, a common thing across functions, a very easy way to interface with them. Um, but current FAS doesn't ship with a real API gateway, generally speaking. Um, and so we've wrapped Kong in Dispatch, which Kong is an open source API gateway that's pretty widely adopted and has a lot of plugins. Um, and we've also, you know, we talked to uh, Edith Levine from Solo.io today, um, and she's got a project called Glue, which might also be appropriate in this space. So this is a pretty simplified view of what Dispatch actually looks like architecturally. Uh, the, the big fat bar, the control plane, it's actually a, a whole suite of microservices that are, do the various management pieces. Um, we've got our IAM that connects to um, your existing like uh, OIDC or OAuth2 compatible uh, identity, identity provider. We've got an image registry. Um, currently, we just kind of use the uh, internal um, Docker registry, but this could be, um, let's say, uh, Harbor, which is a VMware open source product. It could be any, any Docker compatible registry. Um, we store our state in Postgres. We store secrets in Kubernetes secrets. All of this is managed by dispatch. And then um, we've got the API gateway. Um, what I haven't talked about yet is the pieces to the right, which are the new pieces. This is our integration with the Open Service Broker API. And it allows us to bind functions to services, such as databases, which 
effectively allows you now to build applications as opposed to just stateless functions. So this is effectively what our um, integration with the open service broker is. So through dispatch, you're going to be able to list the available services, and I'll show you. Um, we're going to create a DB instance which, and, and create a binding, which is then stored in dispatch via secrets. Um, we're going to create a function which uses this binding, and then we'll execute it, and we'll do a little bit more, too. Anyways, so let's actually do the demo. All right, so let's start off. So should be, I should say, um, the first thing we're going to actually do is that a little bigger. First thing we're going to do is create a runtime image. So a function, we're going to, this is all going to be done in Python, but um, a function, you know, needs a runtime in order to, well, do anything. Uh, dispatch itself has a notion of base images and images. So the base images contain effectively your OS and uh, the runtime. What Dispatch allows you to do is create images, which are effectively a, a, an extension of the base image and allows you to layer on, let's say, runtime dependencies, which is in fact what we're going to do. Uh, this is a little bit different than, for instance, like uh, Amazon, which the only way you do this is by tarring up all your all your dependencies and pushing that up. And it's also a bit different from, let's say, OpenFAS or Riff or any of the other uh, open source FAS, which you, you're the developer is managing the Docker container itself. So let's create an image. So first, create image, give it the image name, base image name, and then the dependencies. If we want to look at the dependencies, requirements, uh, here's a list of them, right? They're pretty standard Python dependencies, gives us access to Postgres, uh, and a little bit more. So we've got an image. Next thing we're going to do is Uh, is create a Postgres database. So copying and pasting this one because I don't remember it all. Um, if we want to look at what services we've made available, so dispatch, get service classes. So the service classes are the types of services that were available that are available. And I've, effective, I've associated Dispatch with a Azure service broker, which is why you're seeing a bunch of Azure services. And the one we're interested in right now is the Azure Postgres SQL service. So this is going to provision a Postgres server on Azure and also create a binding, which it stores in Dispatch as a Dispatch secret, which then can be injected into our function without the credentials needing to be you know, checked in or even the developer knowing the credentials. Anyways, so we're going to create this service instance of one of these service classes. So the command is somewhat straightforward. Uh, service instance, we give it a name, uh, we give it the service class itself. We're giving it a plan, which is an open service broker API thing, which, well, not that important. Um, and then a bunch of parameters. Uh, the parameters, you can discover, there's a schema for the parameters which is available, but we'll not go into that right now. Anyways, it's created, it's going to go provision, it's actually going to do it. It's also going to take about 10 minutes, so we're just going to leave it here, and we're going to use one that I've already created, so get service instances. All right, so we're going to use this Azure PG one, which is already ready, already bound, um, and ready for us to use. Anyways, so what I'm going to do first is create a little echo function. And the reason for doing this um, is so that I can show you exactly what this service binding does. So I've created this echo function. All the echo function does is echo the function context. Context is one of two parameters that make up a function signature, and it's where service bindings API context uh, secrets get injected into the function. So anyways, I've created the function already, so dispatch get function. Let's make sure it's ready. It's ready. Dispatch exec. 
uh, echo pg wait. All right, uh, so that gave us a whole bunch of output. The important bit right here is the context. So this is one of the two things that gets passed in the function. And more specifically, we've got service bindings, and we've got our Azure PG service binding, which includes the credentials to the database. And I should say, the way this was associated with this function was this flag right here when I created the function. Anyways, so that works fantastic. Got to get my ordering right. So I guess I forgot to start with what we were building. So what we're going to build, and this didn't show, this scaled wrong. What we're going to build is a little notes app. And so I've got the front end for the notes app, but as you can see, I've got, it's just getting 404s. The back end's missing. So that's what we're creating. We're creating, um, the function, the database, and the API endpoints to back this app. So we've got a function here. And let's, maybe we should look at the function before we create it. So this is the function, all notes. And it handles um, both creating and getting back notes. Notes are small effectively rows in a, data, in a Postgres database. Um, the handle function is the entry point um, for dispatch, so this is the function signature. It's very simple. You've got the context, which we just showed what, what it contains, and the payload. The payload's gonna be you know, any of the input parameters, uh, query parameters to that function. First thing we call is setup. Setup takes the context, it ex extracts the service bindings, creates the database connection, um, and the table. The table is this object right here. I'm using a small ORM called Peewee because I didn't want to write raw SQL. I thought it'd be a little bit nicer to look at. And um, then I'm looking at the HTTP context. So the HTTP context is injected um, via the API gateway. And we can use this to you know, determine whether or not the request is a post or, or a get. And based on that, call the appropriate function. So if it's a post, we're gonna call this add note, which is gonna create a note into our database. If it's get, get note, so we're just gonna list back all the notes. Pretty simple function, pretty simple service. So, let's... so here we go. Here we're gonna create this, or no, that's not the function, we just created that one. Let's create the right one. That's the API, don't need that yet. Let's create the function. All right, so we just created it, same, same story. Uh, create function, we give it the image name. So this is our image that contains our Postgres dependencies. Um, all notes is the name of the function we just created and a path to the function file, and then we're associating it with the Azure PG uh, service. Let's see if it's ready. Dispatch, get function. Uh, we can just list them all. And there it is, all notes, it's ready. Perfect. Um, we can even call it now, so dispatch. Dispatch exec. Or, don't need that. All notes, wait. First time it runs, it takes a little longer because it's instantiating everything. The next few times it'll be faster. Um, output, empty list. We have nothing in the database, so that's not a surprise. Everything works, though. Great. All right. Next thing we're going to do is create an API endpoint. So that's this command. Uh, again, pretty simple. So create API. All notes is the name of the API. All notes is also the name of the function that we're binding to this API. Uh, we're not doing any auth, so public. We're associating it with both the get and post method. We're, sub we're assigning it to this path slash note, and we're adding cores so that the browser's happy. Cool. Dispatch. Get API. 
and that's ready too. So can we check that out? Let's do it. So it's so curl. Yeah, and it worked. Looks a little better when we pipe to JQ. But again, it's empty still because we don't have anything in our, in our database. But can we create something into our database? So you see how currently we're just getting, we were getting 404s. Now if I reload this, oh, better. No 404. So let's create a title to this. Hello, CF Summit. Welcome to dispatch. Visit us at dispatch.io. Let's create that note. Hello, CF Summit. Um, welcome to dispatch. Um, if anyone wants, they could even go to this. It's CF Summit 2018.dispatchframework.io. And that's the demo. So I guess I can continue. All right. So anyways, we just added this service, uh, the service integration to dispatch. Um, we're still a pretty early stage product, or project, I should say. We just released our 0 0.1.11 uh, release, which doesn't really mean anything, but we are releasing weekly. Um, we're adding features pretty regularly, um, but we can always use help. Um, currently, we have event sources from the API Gateway and vCenter, um, and soon we'll have public cloud. We have uh, language support for JavaScript, Python 3, PowerShell, and as of maybe today, I just saw a pull request come in for Java and I think Clojure as well. We support OpenFAS and Riff. Um, that list might expand as well. Um, we've got IAM support with per-user policies. Um, we run on, effectively, any Kubernetes, and yeah, you can see us at dispatchframework.io, see us at Twitter, um, all that good stuff. And go for it. So we would love to have people come and join us uh, in the community, work with us to add some of these features, look for how we can do integrations of dispatch into potentially more uh, of the Cloud Foundry uh, ecosystem. Uh, where you know you can bring your expertise, you can leverage us to be able to provide a functions as a service uh, uh, into the Cloud Foundry uh, family. So please come to our GitHub, uh, take a look at it. There's some some great docs talking about how to get started in it. They'd love to have uh, all of you to uh, help us out with. Uh, here are some additional links uh, where you can find us on GitHub documentation. We have, of course, a Twitter feed. Uh, if you go to the VMware uh, Code Slack channel, we have their, their Slack team. There's a channel that we have there to talk about dispatch, and then uh, we also have a couple of links for some of the technologies that we're using: OpenFAS, Riff, and, and Kong at this time. So, any questions that anyone has, I'll leave the link slide up. So I got one question there. Uh, in the demo, I saw you attached your function to a service. Yep. Can you attach to several services as well? You can. So that context has a key for each service. And so you can, and that command will take as many services as you want. So as long as you've created that service instance ahead of time, you can go ahead and bind it. It'll be available to the function in the context. Cool. Uh, Follow-up question, uh, if I, <clears throat> add a different service afterwards? How can I bind that to my functions afterwards? Uh, so, I mean, you'd effectively just update the function. So when you update the function, you're creating a new image. And I mean, in this case, you're just creating a new association, which dispatch would take care of. So it's no problem at all. Perfect, thank but you. But your code would probably change, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Great. Thank you, everyone. Cool.